Hi, I'm Wojtek. I work at Software Mansion for almost five years now. And during that time, I was lucky enough to work on numerous features that only sole purpose was to making apps nicer and being overall just a better experience. And from making those animations, hmm, <laughs> from making those animations to little features that improve performance, I gather some knowledge, and I want to share this knowledge with you today to answer the questions, how to make your app stand out. But first, I want to emphasize that I believe small features and improvements can really make significant difference. While it may not be immediately noticeable, certain apps are more user-friendly and offer more enjoyable experience than the others. And it's not without a reason. Adding haptic feedback, nice press animation, or smooth transitions between splash screen and the actual content of the app really can make all the difference. But first, I would like to talk about animations overall. Because before we start to create, it's best to know your tools. And yes, the obvious answer should be here, just use reanimated and whatever. But reanimated is a powerful engine, and you need to select the things you're going to use responsibly. I don't know how familiar you are with the whole reanimated library, but right now we all need the basic knowledge. We need to know there are two main ways to move stuff around the screen. First is with timing, function that animates values on predetermined curves. And the second one is with spring, that moves things around based on spring-like movement. And the only thing we can really control is the specification of that spring. And I don't want to say I'm lazy or anything, but let's say I heavily prefer the with timing. Why? Because with timing is predictable, easy to customize, easy to understand. Just look at the props we got in the documentation and see that, yeah, we got the duration. If we want your animation to be longer, we can change that. We got easing if we want to change how the animation looks, and it's great. But unfortunately, with Spring, it's not that easy to understand because the only thing we control is the specification of the Spring. It's hard to exactly get the desired outcome. It's how to predict how it will behave from code only. Just looking at the props, it's like, it's damping, yeah, mass, stiffness that had default to 100 for some reason. Those strange things that I don't even do know what they do. And if you change mass to 10 and damping to 11, what will happen? Like, nobody really knows, just straight from the head. And, but when I started using both of them, I realized that even if with timing is a great to animate opacity or animations between screens, it also can create effects that look stiff, maybe a little out of place, while with spring is more suitable to animate things that should have some mass to behave like actual physical objects. And just look at the simple example I created. This animation was created fully with, with timing, and it's serving a purpose. It's clear and easy. But when we use the with spring-based animations, it really starts to shine. You can actually see the mass, the difficulty of the stopping the physical object in place after movement. And just looking at those simple examples, I think even if both are similar, in side to side comparison, Spring provides more natural movement. So when we come back to the question, which one should you use, the answer can be only yes. <laughs> it depends. Like, you have to think what you want to achieve 
and decide consciously, not just taking easy route, just like I did, and creating everything with time agree because it's easy. And it's no better time to try it out for yourself because with the new reanimated re docs, you can actually see live examples of how the animation will look like. And it's great learning tool. <laughs> we can finally see what the mass actually do, what will happen when I decrease the stiffness. You can see the difference. And talking about the difference, I always liked to see the views I create in React Native Apps a little differently. Not only as a 2D images and text, but as a planes in a 3D space. Like, even the developer tools and Xcode, you have an option to see 3D hierarchy of views you are actually working on on dynamic three-dimensional space. It helps to understand a lot of problems you haven't seen before. And using transform rotations together with a perspective can really give you so much more artistic freedom and just knowing it's possible make you more confident in creating some unique designs. Uh, let's see how adding rotation affected example from before. And I created something like this. Look how much lively it is. It's, it's sparkling with joy. While it can be a little over the top, OK, it's eye-catching and it having a charm and character. Something we couldn't, unfortunately, say about the simple animation created with timing. It was serving a purpose, yeah, yeah, but it was a tool. Now it has its own expression. And I don't want to say that I want you to make animations like that all over your app. That would be simply dreadful. Uh, but when something good happened, like once a month or something like that, such animation will surely help to elevate this moment. And you can ask yourself a question, can you break something like this? How far can I push 3D transformations because apps start to break? In the end, though, are just regular views, and we not often see some sophisticated transforms based on them. And I checked it out, and after I created simple Game Boy Advance style racing game based on only transforms in <laughs> I think it was a good place to stop. Like, <laughs> I will never need something such complicated in my life. So, I, uh, so now I only fear artistic freedom of using transformations, and I encourage you to transform your views without the fear of something's breaking all in the way. You have my seal of approval. And if you are still not sure how to use this effect, I go more in depth in a series of posts I wrote on Medium some time ago where I explained how to make card game in React Native using 3D transformations. And wait, we talked about using views and how I see them as a planes in a 3D space, so there is no easy way back. Let's talk about real, actual 3D models. And since you probably heard Krzysiek last talk yesterday about 3D, I don't want to repeat how reanimated starts to support 3D and how we are ready to have models in our apps. But just overall summary of the talk was that React Native is ready. And I ask you questions, are we ready? <laughs> and here I want to tell you a very short story of me creating a 3D content. And it's really a story of uh, being afraid. First, I was afraid of the 3D software or like Blender or 3D Max. I always feared those hundreds of icons in the billions of menus that do hundreds of things I don't really understand. It overwhelms me. Like, it's a great software, but I don't get it. And from a developer point of view, I was afraid about performance how different devices will handle 3D rendering. 
mm, there are 3D games on phones, yeah, for sure, but 3D in a mobile app, additionally created with React Native, it's totally a different story. And I have to be honest here, I didn't want to touch a topic I don't have really experience with. So, as a part of a preparation for this talk, I created a whole page based on the 3D models just to see how bad it really is. And I have to tell you, it was not only better than I anticipated, it was a blast. It was a super fun experience. It was overall feedback was overwhelmingly positive. And I, and I don't mean I got magically good at it. No, my skills are way below average. I created my models from simple cubes. I created my textures in Microsoft Paint. So I look a potato. My car looks like it was chopped out food straight from some deepest nightmares. But 3D is such a novelty, and being able to play with it even for a little while is so much fun, you just have to try it out. And it made me realize one thing, that maybe the most important thing. It doesn't matter how detailed your models are, but the context that you're used in. If they are not the only sole purpose for the app to exist, it's okay for them to not to be perfect. And if they're just a toys, and small little features, just having them is fun enough to go an extra mile to implement them. And if you don't believe me, you can go to voitus7.fun and see the results for yourself anytime. <laughs> oh, and 3D also gives you a reason and opportunity to create some absurd features and experiences. For example, I created the most useless footer around the world, I believe, and I'm proud of it. Just you tap the uh, button on the top and just like, poof. <laughs> yes, those boxes are, of course, clickable links, just to be clear here. And... <laughs> But if you don't want to go into 3D, it's absolutely okay. It's reasonable. But we got to a lot of wonderful libraries at our disposal. And one of the most fun and crazy libraries out there is the React Native implementation of 2D Box, the very same physics engine that was used to create, for example, Angry Birds. And you got an example created by Tomek in reanimated example app so you can check it out even today. And yes, when you think about it, it seems kind of useless and mostly a gimmick, yeah, for sure. But everything you create with such solution is new and fresh. And just imagine the first React Native shopping list application that you have actual physical objects falling into the cart after you purchase a real item that would be simply awesome, even if the app is super simple at its core. And yes, I want to worship those small features, those little improvements, and one piece of hardware is especially good to make those experiences but I believe it got a really bad reputation. I'm talking about sensors. And when I think about gyroscope and accelerometer before my eyes, I always get those old cliche games. Those games where you roll a ball to, to, to get out of the maze or you steer a car by pretending it's a steering wheel and rotating the phone like a maniac, yes. I hate those things, and I turn them off the second I realize they are on. But when I first got my hands on this sensor from Reanimated, I realized that sensors can be used in a much better, more gentle way to create small features that, when noticed, made user realize, hmm, 
someone's actually really care about this app. And one of my favorite examples of using sensor is to use it together with gradients, to smoothly move from one color to another as the phone changes position, or to add reflection to you, this internal currency that you have in your app to make it shine when the phone is in a perfect position. And I would like to encourage you to add sensor functionality to your app in this calm, distinct way. And yeah, I think that's it for today. I would like to speak to you a little longer, but because you can create like so much more, but you probably have enough of my rambling already. So as a word of ending, I just wanted to summarize this whole talk in one sentence. Just think outside the box, experiment, and find this little amount of time to implement those features that you have already in the back of your head. And that will surely help your app to stand out. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.